My name is David Delgado, and I'm a visual strategist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. My name is Dan Goods, and I lead the studio at the Jet Propulsion Lab. We really love thinking about a whole variety of different ideas, new things, conceptually driven things. We try to communicate ideas that are sometimes the underlying essence of a mission, but at its heart really is sort of tying into this, this bigger dream that we all have of being bigger than ourselves, rising up to something that is very, very difficult. We try to make things meaningful and emotional and connect with people. We're always trying to think about what is the essence of something and communicate it in an interesting and powerful way. We try to start from that core of like, what is it actually that we're trying to say, what's important, and what do we think will actually move people? We need to be doing these things because other people are not, right? And we're in this unique opportunity or a place where we get asked to do that. We get asked to push yeah. humanity further. We like to talk about doing what's on the edge of possibility. There are a lot of satellites that are circling around Earth that NASA has, Earth science satellites, that are helping us to understand this planet that we live on. GRACE follow-on mission is a mission that really is important because it is these two spacecraft that are following one behind the other. And what it's doing is together they map the gravity field of Earth. But what you can tell from that is when water moves. Because water has mass, they can detect the movement of mass, and therefore they can see the movement of water. And you see the movement of water change over time. The Earth Science Directorate approached us and asked us to just to create something that would get people to think about the GRACE follow-on mission and ask questions about it and help them understand what GRACE follow-on is about. We wanted to create something that spoke to the mission at a really high level and just got people to think about the fact that these two spacecraft are all about looking at water move. Water moves on Earth and GRACE follow-on can track it. In our specific role, the place we like to work in, is to be able to make that data or that mission or whatever it may be more intuitive, more personal, more easily accessible because a lot of times really at the root of what is happening in science is something everybody can relate to and we want to be able to have people understand it in multiple ways. What we wanted to do was to showcase water in a way that people aren't used to seeing it, to celebrate the beauty of the movement itself and then to celebrate the data and merge those two things together in a way that allowed people to understand that they're connected. When we kind of jumped into that world of imagination of what story would Grace tell if it could tell us anything, the story that you know obviously came to mind was that it loves water. It's looking at water, it's looking at the movement of water, and that's pretty much all it can see. We just wanted to keep it simple, but it sort of capture that moment in the most beautiful way possible, and slow motion felt like the sort of the best way to do that. And so you see drips of water sort of falling down from one spacecraft to the next. You see it in a whole new way. You see the beauty and the nuances of the fluid dynamics. So the Pulse is a digital sculpture that responds to the communication between spacecrafts and Earth. So whenever lights come down, that means at that moment we're receiving data from a spacecraft. And when lights go up, that means that we're sending data to a spacecraft. And every 20 seconds we switch to a different antenna. And so you'll see the name of the spacecraft that we're talking to at that moment. And then the amount of light that you see represents how much data is going back and forth. But it really gives you a sense of quantity as well as uh, direction and what's happening. You sort of get a sense of the heartbeat of space exploration. Exoplanets are planets that have been found around other stars. So we have our own planets here, eight or nine, depending on who you, who you <laughs> want to believe. But we've been finding thousands of planets around other stars. There was this uh, really amazing scientist, Sarah Seeger, who was coming to the lab. The people who ran the uh, office wanted to let her know that we're celebrating all of these amazing discoveries of different exoplanets around other stars. And they have just really bizarre and strange characteristics. 
compared to the way that we normally describe Earth. What would it be like to go there? The whole genre of the WPA posters and, and that you know came to mind. And so we worked with the scientists and the engineers, it helped to understand what these places are like. And then we took the most interesting characteristic of each place and really highlighted that. If we were to have fun with this idea, let's do it with a wink and a smile and create something that may get people to chuckle a little bit but also to understand that these places are real and we're talking about our best understanding at the moment of what they're like. Lois Kim is on our team and she came up with this amazing idea. What if we had a sign that was robotic and it could move in any direction and point to all the things that are in space? But basically it, it points to stars, planets, exoplanets, uh, comets, or even our missions that are out in space. We always think of space as there, but space is also through the earth, you know, things are through the earth, you know, right? And on so, the other side, so yeah. it's pointing to Mars and it points down there. Well, it's, it's because if you go straight in that direction, that's where Mars is. It's a simple reminder of like where we are and that we're not up or down, you know, it's, uh, space is all over the place. We can only sense so much and then, you know, it stops. But knowing that things are around us that we can't perceive and we cannot interact with, is still super valuable and really kind of ignites the imagination. Being able to marry that real data with something artistic has been like a real interesting kind of jumping off point for us in a lot of different areas. We were asked to help to create gifts that the lab could give to our former director, Dr. Charles Alachi. Dan and I were looking at the flag of Lebanon and didn't know the story of what's on that flag. And on that flag is a cedar tree. It's a symbol of strength and endurance, strong wood. And so what we wanted to give him was a dedication towards the future. And so rather than just give him a tree, a small tree that is a cedar of Lebanon, we wanted to give him a full grown tree, a tree in 2000 years. We surrounded that trunk with a ring that is dedicated to Dr. Alachi that says, Dare Mighty Things. It's really a call to the imagination of to imagine what that future tree will be like. It's not about heritage, it is, but it's about the future of us all. NASA has a bunch of satellites that study the Earth. It studies our atmosphere, it studies our land, and studies the seas, and there's about 19 of them. Wouldn't it be great if we could listen to the location of satellites? Much like you can hear a bird flying across the sky or a dog barking somewhere else, that you could locate that sound. We called up uh, someone that we'd worked with in the past, uh, Jason Klamoski from Studio KCA, he's in Brooklyn, and said, yeah, we need, we need an object of wonder for this sound installation. Jason uh, came up with a whole variety of different ideas, but the one that we loved the most was one that was based on a seashell, based on this notion that, you know, every kid knows the story of picking up a seashell and you kind of hear the ocean. Well, this is a seashell that lets you listen to space, much like you are not hearing the ocean. You're not hearing space, but it's a nice metaphor that, that we liked. walking around the garden and trying to listen to all of the different types of things we can hear and identify what those things were. When we had the opportunity to do it at a garden, it was like, oh, this is this is just perfect. And, and uh, the Huntington made the space for it and it's right in a spot where the first thing you see in the gardens is this. And uh, we, we call this sneaking up on learning. So the idea of creating something that's beautiful and mysterious and it sort of draws you in and then hopefully you're in the mindset for learning because you start to ask lots of questions. It's great that it's here because this place also represents a collection of the natural environments from around the world. That made sense when we're talking about earth science. It's not about just one particular thing, it's about it all. It 
It's open at the top to give a direct view of the sky. It's open on the sides, which allows sound to go through the walls into the outer space so you don't create sort of the echoes on the inside. Jason looked at uh, the way that uh, photographs of the North Star are taken, and you really get a sense of movement when you look at sort of the patterning that is surrounded here. This sort of the sense of spinning conceptually works with this idea of orbiting. When you stand in the center of this space, Wherever you hear a sound, that's the exact location of one of the satellites. Then we have another phase, which is we take 24 hours worth of movement and compress it into one minute. And so then you hear all sorts of things moving around. You hear them all at the same time. I remember when we first put it together, we weren't quite sure if everything was working right, but we came at dusk and you could see the International Space Station going by. And I could see it right there and we could hear it right there. And it's like, yes, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> if you close your eyes and you point your finger towards the sound of a, where a satellite is coming from, that that is where that satellite is. That kind of notion of just understanding that pr their presence, that they're there, we find it's just, it's a different approach to understanding that information, but it also includes like a sense of relaxation and a sense of beauty, just understanding that these things are there. This call of the future is really the call of the imagination, to imagine this hopeful future that we all can create and that is exciting to me.